What is going on guys? Hope you're doing absolutely amazing. So what I want to show you in this quick video is how to get reproducible results so that you can debug stuff easier in PyTorch. Alright, so we're just going to start with import torch and we're also going to import uh, numpy as mp and import random. All right, you might not use these two, but if you're using them, I'm going to show you what to do. So let's just say we have, I don't know, we have a random tensor and we're going to do a five by five and then we're going to do, I don't know, print uh, torch dot Einsum, by the way, check out my Einsum video. If you want to know what Einsum does. And then we're just going to do this. So this is just going to sum all the elements in X. And just, we're, we're just going to print the sum. And if we print the sum on different runs, we're going to get different results. Uh, but let's say we want to have the same results all the time, right? This is very useful for debugging. And uh, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to first set a seed. And we're going to set it to 42 because I'm also a nerd and I know the meaning of life. And then we're going to do torch.manual seed uh, to seed. And if we actually just do that, that's going to be enough for this case. But if you're using something with numpy, you also want to do numpy.random seed and then seed. And if you're using something with random, uh, Python's library, we want to do random.seed seed. Uh, now, we're not doing that in this case, so it's not going to do anything, but uh, we still want to do it if, if, if we're actually using NumPy or random. And then if you're using CUDA, so if using CUDA, you got to do uh, torch.cuda.manual seed all and then seed. Um, yeah, don't ask me what this does exactly. I'm not sure, but if you want deterministic behavior, this is what you got to do. And then torch.backends.cudanen.deterministic equals true. And then torch.backends.cudanen.benchmark equals false. Uh, so again, this is going to make the behavior deterministic, but you're sacrificing it for speed. So you don't want to do this when you're actually training the model and so on. This is only when you're debugging and want to see uh, sort of compare different results and see if what you, the changes you did made an improvement and so on. That's when this is useful. With that said, this is how you get uh, reproducible results. So uh, this was just a quick video. Like the video if you thought it was useful and see you in the next one.